Hello everyone, this is Nye Victor One Hotel Yankee from Singapore. Uh, a few days ago, I made a video that talks about my plan for Q100 operation. And I also shared my system block diagram for my setup and also my plan a few steps uh, towards my operations. So today I'm very happy to share with you about the successful testing uh, for reception. Uh, yeah, first, first of all, let me recap about my system block diagram. So this is the entire uh, setup that my, I plan to have, and uh, both transmitting and receiving. Uh, so for this time, uh, I do not have any transmitting equipment yet, and I do not have the parabolic antenna yet. So my receiving test is only about uh, my satellite LMB. I use the LMB to point towards the satellite directly and uh, try to test the signal that I receive. The purpose of this is just to test whether I can receive the satellite. If I can receive Q100, then I can proceed with uh, transmitting equipment and parabolic antenna. If I do not, if I cannot receive the satellite, then um, all the following steps is you are useless. So uh, this is the simplified block diagram for this test. Uh, I will have a LMB, uh, bias T, SDR, and laptop only. So uh, the location I choose is a small hill inside my campus. Uh, so uh, because on the hill, I do not have a tr any trees in the west direction. Then there are some buildings below, but uh, on top of their roofs uh, is quite clear. So uh, at low elevation, I can have a very clear uh, line of sight to the satellite. Uh, so my setup is like this, uh, laptop and use a USB to USB with SDR. And also bias T, uh, lithium battery to give a 12 volt, uh, voltage. And, uh, the coax cable is three meter long. Uh, the coax cell table is L LMR240. Uh, it's quite, it's a lower, uh, the, the loss is lower than normal, uh, coax cable we use in shortwave or VHF, UHF. But, uh, still, uh, it is not as good as those thicker coax cell cable. But it's, it is good enough for my portable operation. And also three meter is not a very long distance. So the loss is, uh, okay. Uh, and, uh, the LMB is just mounted on a tripod and pointed directly towards west. The, it may not be very accurate. Uh, it has a few degrees, uh, off, but I think that's okay because we only receiving the CW beacon. And, uh, yeah, here's the video clip about the CW beacon. Yeah, from this short video clip, we can hear the CW beacon. The speed is quite low, so it's easy to copy. Uh, and, uh, yeah, the sound may sound a bit weak and a bit mumbled, but it is okay because we only use a, uh, bare LMB and, uh, the gain is not there. Uh, the noise floor is very high. The CW signal is about 5 dB above the noise floor. So, uh, we consider that it's okay. Uh, because we are a low elevation uh, region. So 5 dB is uh, actually quite good. And uh, the noise floor is quite high. So uh, from the waterfall, we can identify the CW signal and we can hear the CW signal. So it is considered successful. And we also, pl we also plan to receive the P PSK beacon. The PSK beacon is not as uh, powerful as uh, a CW beacon, so it's a bit weaker, about 1 or 2 dB above noise floor. We are able to see the BPSK beacon from the waterfall because they are two very close parallel lines indicating BPSK signal. Uh, but 
it is not a we are not able to copy and we're not able to decode because we need some software to decode from SDR we can uh, see the signal only and also we are able to see some very weak signal uh, not able to hear anything but we can identify those as SSB signal from other stations they are having their uh, contact they are having QSOs on Q100 but we are not able to receive anything uh, we are not able to receive anything so this is a quite successful uh, experiment and also I have some interesting interesting fundings uh, first of all, uh, as the manual of the LMB and also many other operators says, LMB need a warm-up time, about 20 minutes. So it, within this 20 minutes, uh, the LMB is not functioning very well. So from the experiment, I also experienced this. Uh, because for the first uh, 10 to 15 minutes, the frequency shift is very, very uh, significant. So uh, I, I was able to hear the CW beacon at the very beginning when I powered on. But the frequency actually quite drifting, drifting very fast. So I lock the frequency. Then I hear the CW tone actually uh, changes and then disappear because it's out of the filter. So I have to change the frequency very often. A few, I think every 10 seconds I need to change the frequency so that I can constantly listen to the CW beacon. Yeah, then after 15 minutes or 20, uh, the frequency actually stops. The frequency drifting stops, but there's a slight difference between the calculated frequency and the actual receiving frequency. Because the satellite is downlink uh, in 10.5 GHz band and the local oscillator frequency is 9.75 GHz. I do some uh, simple math there. Uh, the actual frequency is about 739, 739 or 749, I can't remember exactly. Uh, uh, should be 739, 739 point something uh, megahertz. But the actual frequency is actually about 50 to 60 kilohertz lower than the calculated frequency. Uh, and uh, this is after the frequency becomes stable. So I it's a bit lower. But it, actually, it is actually okay to receive. And also I do some simple subtraction here. I can locate it, the actual downlink frequency. Uh, however, this uh, I need to do some further experiment and testing to see whether I can improve on this and also I can improve on other uh, LMB performance. For the LMB, I may do some modification as I did some research online. Other ham, they also had some modification to the LMB to better suit Q100 operation. Uh, that is one of the uh, further plan I'm planning to do. The other plan is uh, transmitting because I can, if I can receive, then I can proceed with transmitting. Uh, right now, the 2.4 gigahertz patch antenna is not done yet. Uh, the patch antenna now still looks like this. So I need to fabricate the patch antenna. Um, I am um, may I hope I can fabricate the patch antenna next week. If not, then I must wait until. Uh, next year, after Christmas and New Year, to uh, fabricate the patch antenna. Uh, the other thing is about 2.4 GHz amplifier. For amplifier, I need to give a special thanks to P BG0AUB. Yeah, BG0AUB, he is very kindly offered me an, a 2.4 amplifier. And uh, right now, the amplifier is still with him. Uh, he is doing some final testing and uh, try to uh, improve the gain and try to do some... Uh, uh, t specification uh, testing. Uh, so uh, I may able to receive it one or two weeks later when I go to China then collect from him. And uh, yeah, that's the transmitting side. And also parabolic antenna, most likely I will get it from China also and uh, bring it here or ship it here. Uh, yeah, the, the shipping and all the moving is quite troublesome. But I think, yeah, but I think I'm able to receive uh, the Q100, then all the other things I can overcome. Yeah, really look forward to uh, do this uh, operation. And uh, I also shared this uh, test result in some of the Facebook group and uh, Twitter. Receive a lot of uh, positive comment. And uh, yeah, people really looking forward to uh, for me to get on to Q100. Because uh, for Q100, Singapore is a new country. Uh, there has not been any ham to operate on Q100. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to join the, this community. 
and also a few other ham from Singapore also shows interest in Q100 and they are waiting for my uh, positive result. If I can get onto Q100 successfully, I will maybe share uh, my uh, info with them. Then hope there are more Singapore station get onto Q100 and uh, yeah to talk with uh, many European ham, some ham from uh, Middle East or even Africa. Yeah. So yeah, this is the this is the my sharing about my receiving experiment and I hope you like my video I hope you like m me sharing my experience about this preparation work uh, thank you for your support 73 see you next time bye bye